Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom Lego building block template presentation in PowerPoint. So I go to the insert menu and use the shape here that's a rectangle, and you can see that I can draw all sorts of shapes. Uh, but for a perfect square, what I need to do is hold down the shift key and that will snap this to be a perfect square. There we go. Next in the format menu, I'm going to select no outline. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to choose a black outline, but make it as thin as I possibly can. So I'm going to come down to weight and choose just a quarter of a point. Uh, this will actually help it uh, to make it clear where the edges of bricks are a little later on. So once I've created this uh, square, which is going to be my one by one block effectively, I'm going to resize this and I want to do this exactly. So by selecting the square at the top right corner here in the home tab, sorry, in the format tab of the drawing and tools uh, part, we're going to choose um, 0.75 by 0.75. Now that seems very small, uh, but if we imagine all the bricks around the outside here, that's one by one. That's the right size for one by one. Now I'm going to zoom in uh, so we can see this more clearly. There we are, zoomed into uh, 400% so we can see this clearly now. And the next thing I need to do is add the circle, which will be the bump on the top of the brick. So again, going to go up to the shapes section. And here again, I can draw any sort of ellipse uh, or oval shape I want, but by holding the shift key down, I snap it to being a perfect circle. Now for this, I don't want an outline, so I'm gonna choose no outline. And I want this to be just a little bit smaller than this square. Now the square is 0.75. Um, I think probably the circle here should be about 0.5. So I'm going to change that to 0.5 for the width and the height. And then I can drag this into the shape. Just for the moment so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to change the color. Uh, but obviously this would be the same color normally. Uh, if you don't quite manage to get it lined up, you can see I've got those little guides appearing to show that these two shapes are perfectly lined. But if you're not sure, simply highlight both of the shapes and in the drawing tools format uh, part of the ribbon, go to align and just choose align center and then align middle. And that will line the two circles, sorry, the circle and the square perfectly. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to click on this circle. And here I'm gonna change the fill back to the same color as the square. And I'm gonna to go to shape effects. And I'm gonna go down to bevel and just add this top right bevel here called slant to begin with. Now you'll see that doesn't look uh, what we want it to uh, for the moment. So I'm going to click on format shape and click on the effects and the 3D format. I'm just going to change the width and the height a little bit. Uh, we want to change the width to about uh, eight and the height Actually, sorry, the width, let's change that to about two. There we go. And the height to about eight. There we are. So that's created a fairly convincing bump on the top of the Lego brick there. And just gonna add a slight bit of a shadow to that as well. So again, in the format shape menu, I'm gonna click on shadow. Um, I'm gonna start off with a preset, but then I'm gonna edit that slightly. So I'm going to just have that shadow coming around bottom right slightly. I'm gonna bring down the blur and just, yeah, distance about there. Slightly increase the opacity. There, I think that'll do. So there we are, that's our first one by one block. Now, once you've created a one by one block, then the next thing to do is to use this as a template. 
Uh, now, one thing you might want to do before you create your template, of course, is add text to this circle. On the traditional Lego bricks, then the word Lego is written along here. If we're going to use this as a template and you want that uh, logo or text to be in on every single bump, we need to add it to this uh, circle here, which is going to be the template for every brick we create. Uh, to do that, uh, we can simply right click on this circle and edit text. And I'm going to type tech tray like that. Now, obviously, the font is a little bit big there, so I'm going to reduce the font size down. Uh, you can use the uh, menu up here, but what I'm doing is uh, holding control and using the square brackets on my keyboard. Uh, once I've got it to about what I think is the right size, um, I now need to click on the Drawing Tools menu, go to Format, come to the Text Effects, and then click on Transform. And it's the follow path, the second follow path here, the arch down that we want. I'm going to click on that. I think the writings, the, the, the letters are a little bit close together uh, for me here. So in the Home tab, to space out those letters, in the Font section, uh, we have this character spacing. Uh, but I might just change the font as well, just to make it slightly chunkier. There we are. Um, so now I'm going to click on character space. I'm going to start with um, loose. That's a little bit too loose, I think. So I'm going to click back on that. More spacing. And just reduce that down a point to about two. Click OK. Yeah, that's about fine. Um, might just better increase the font size slightly. Yes, I think that's fine. Um, and then finally, what we're going to do is, again, back in the drawings tools, uh, drawing tools menu there, click on format. Um, text effects and then shadow. I'm going to choose this one, which is the uh, inside shadow there. Click on that. Um, that's a little dark there, I think. I'll tell you what, let's just, I think because of the size of this, let's just change the text color so it's slightly darker than the others. There we are. I think probably that looks best. Uh, so there we are, that's our, that's our template. Um, zoom out, not going to see that very much, but uh, there we are. All right, so the next thing to do, uh, if I can just grab that, we're zoomed in so far, it's getting a little bit tricky, but uh, just going to zoom in slightly on that single brick. There we are. Um, now what I'm going to do is just move this off to the side slightly and now I'm going to add another uh, square um, or rather a rectangle. I'm going to simply click on this rectangle, hold down control and then drag and drop this underneath. Now what I'm doing is lining it up vertically, um, not so concerned with the right hand edge because you'll see why in a minute, but the left hand edge does need to be lined up. Now at the moment, we go to the format menu, this square we can see is 0.75 by 0.75. And I want to increase the width now. This is going to be a two bump brick. So this needs to be twice the width. So we're going to change that from 0.75 to 1.5. There we are. So you see how the left hand edge we wanted lined up, but the right hand edge is now moved. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to click on the circle and again, holding down the control key, I'm going to drag that circle down, ignore the text uh, that's uh, visible, that, that won't uh, appear like that. Now, what I've done by lining the two squares up, the two circles uh, are lined up vertically. Uh, so therefore, this bottom circle isn't exactly the right place horizontally. Uh, what I want to do is to bring it down so that the guideline there uh, you can just, I hope, see the orange guidelines showing me that that circle is aligned uh, vertically within the rectangle. So you'll see that what I've got is a horizontal line going right the way through the rectangle from left to right. And there's also two little spaces that show me the gap above and below the circle are the same. So what you're looking to do is to make sure that this circle is aligned with the one above in this square brick here and also aligned vertically within the rectangle. Once you've done that, we can uh, let go of that uh, 
mouse button and control, then hold control down again and drag a copy of this circle across to the right. Now what you want to do here is make sure that you're moving it up and down so it's the same um, vertical distance within this rectangle. But now again, we're looking to make sure that the horizontal distance is the same. So what I want him to do is to make sure that the horizontal distance between the edge of the brick and the circle is the same as the first one. And what you can see is that I've got the, oops, just moving it there. Uh, I've got the guidelines showing me that the distances between the circle and the edge are the same there. So now I know that these two circles are aligned vertically and spaced horizontally. It's time to do the next brick and I'm going to drag the rectangle down and I'm going to change the width again. I'm going to double it again. This is going to be three and I'm going to increase the height as well to 1.5. So this is going to be my two by four um, brick. Uh, and hopefully at this point, you're going to be able to see how you could create more of these. Uh, so very quickly, I'm going to click on both of these two circles. To do that, I clicked on the first one and then held down shift. Click on the second one to select both. Then hold down control and drag a copy of these two down. Again, I'm not moving left and right. They're going to be um, vertically aligned with the ones above. And I need to bring them down so that the gap is about the same as the gap between top and bottom. Now, I really hope you can see this. Um, I do record these um, videos in uh, HD 1080. And if you're not watching it uh, in 1080 or you're on a phone, it's going to be a little bit tricky for you to see. Uh, but if you possibly can, um, I'm holding the mouse key and the button down right now so that you can see that the gap, the space between the top of the circle and the top of the rectangle is the same on each of those three bricks. So you can see the little spacer just sticking out at the right hand side, the top right corner of each brick, there's a little spacer with a little up and down orange arrow that says the gap between the circles and the top of the brick is the same in all three cases. Now I can let go and then I can keep control held down drag a copy of these two circles down, <clears throat> again keeping the horizontal alignment the same, until I get the spacer there, oops, that shows me the gap between the circles and the bottom of the brick is the same as the other bricks, like that, there we go. And now finally I can hold down shift and select all four of these bricks, Control and drag to the right, making sure the vertical alignment's the same until again the gap between all the bricks and the edge is the same, like that. So now I've got my four brick, <clears throat> sorry, my, my two by four brick, um, and we can carry on if you want to and make a, a two by one or make a square brick, it's up to you. Um, but you can get the idea, hopefully, of, of how to make sure that you're aligning all the circles up neatly using the guides, using the visual guides that PowerPoint shows you. Um, and it's important to get it right for these first template bricks. Now, once you've done that, uh, what I would then go on to do is select the um, one by one brick here. And you can either right click and group and choose group. Or you can also highlight all the shapes and just press Control G, which will do the same thing. So I'm selecting each of these bricks so that the rectangle and all of the circles are selected. Uh, Control G to create that as a single group. So now I've got this as a single brick. And the next thing I would do is if you take copies of this brick like this, I'm holding down Control, clicking and dragging. Uh, you can then select this group Use the format menu and use the shape fill to change the color of these bricks. Now, because I colored the text, I'll need to change that as well. If you used a shadow effect, then it won't make any difference, but I'll just change the text to a slightly darker red like that. And then if we click on this shape, let's make this one um, green. There we go. And just change the text to a slightly darker green like that. Um, and there we are, we've got our bricks and you can continue adding templates, uh, template bricks as, as many as you want. 
Uh, the final step, of course, will be to drag these bricks around. Uh, let's move them up into the top left corner. Uh, sorry, top right corner even. Uh, but do make sure that you keep these bricks that you're making as, as templates. So I'd actually drag uh, these off to the side, so they're off the side of the slide. Or make a slide that contains just all your template bricks and copy the ones across that you want. If you zoom in, which you'll need to in order to see this uh, more clearly, uh, you can see how the template, uh, sorry, the guidelines that PowerPoint uh, provides you are the ones that will help you line up your bricks perfectly, like, whoops, oops, I let go of shift there. Let's drag down a copy and then move it. Uh, so the, the guidelines that uh, PowerPoint provides you uh, will allow you to line up your bricks uh, exactly. And I think I've overlapped that brick there, which is why that's not lining up properly. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, and then let's drag one more copy of this green brick over here and then drag it into place. There we go. And using this method, you can create uh, images, you can create borders, you can create uh, full templates um, of Lego based or building block based bricks. And uh, I think that's a really um, nice little thing to, uh, to use. It's a very, very versatile template. Um, you can pretty much do anything you like with it. Um, you can animate the bricks if you like and build up um, some sort of animation where the bricks are creating an image or something. Um, a really good animation to use is where the bricks are falling from the top of the screen and they're building up a wall or something along the bottom. Uh, but there we are. Um, now, if you are um, a subscriber on my YouTube channel, then thank you very much indeed. If not, do hit that subscribe button. And also, I do have a Patreon page. And the Patreon page for that is patreon.com forward slash the tech train. Uh, on that page, you can find a whole lot of downloads. You can find other videos that are not available on YouTube. And you can download this template that I've just made in PowerPoint uh, for free. So have, head over to patreon.com forward slash the tech train and have a look at the options there. If you enjoyed this video, then it will be fantastic if you could subscribe, if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much indeed. Don't forget to hit the little um, notification bell so that you know when I upload new videos. And of course, it will be fantastic if you could like the video. And of course, if you leave a comment as well, if you have any questions, suggestions, anything like that, uh, leave a comment. I do read all comments and I do try to subscribe. Uh, sorry, I try to um, reply as soon as I possibly can. So thank you very much indeed again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.